Welcome to part 3 of the Total Solar Eclipse tutorial. We continue with the same file we worked on in part 2, having made the corona. Switch back to solid shading. Select the camera in Outliner, then press N for properties, and set location to X0, Y-6, Z0, and rotation to X90, Y4 and Z0. In Camera Panel, click the Orthographic button and set Scale to 6. Hide the camera in Outliner by pressing its eye icon. In Render Settings, we'll use the HD720 preset for dimensions. For Preview Rendering, I'll set Scale to 50%. Set End Frame to 500 and for maximum compatibility, change the frame rate to 30 fps. To set the output destination, click the folder icon. I'm just going to enter the name directly in the field, tutorialmovie.avi. Choose a compressed video format from the pop-up menu. The usual choice is Octiora or H.264. I'll use AVI JPEG, RGB, quality at 90%. Set samples to 15, good enough for preview renders. Clam Direct 4, Indirect 3. In light paths, refractive caustics off. Bounces are fine, but just to be sure, increase transparency, max and transmission to 24. In post processing, ensure compositing is on. We'll use it for optical effects. Set Dither to 1, preventing banding artifacts. In Node Editor, click the middle image button for the compositor. Click Use Nodes. Make some room, then add a glare node from the filter submenu and drop it on the line connecting it. Set the glare type to Streaks, Quality High, Iterations 5, Color Modulation 0, Mix 1, Threshold 1.5, Streaks 4, Angle Offset 45, Fade 0.9. Add a Mix node from the Color submenu and drop it on the line after the glare to connect it. Move the glare connection from the first image input to the second and connect the image output from Render Layers node to the first image input of the mix. Set Mix Type to Add from the pop-up menu and Factor to 5 for a strong effect. Add a Lens Distortion node from the Distort submenu and drop it on the connector after the Add node. Set Dispersion to 0.03. Add an RGB Curves node and drop it after Lens Distortion, connecting it. Create a gentle S-curve to enhance contrast. Next, the Moon. We'll use an image of a full moon as a texture on a circle mesh object. You can source your own moon picture or use the Moon Earthshine PNG file available from the link in the description of this video. I created the image from public domain data offered by the US Geological Survey, so it is safe to use for any purpose without attribution. Back to 3D view. Still in front view, with cursor in center, add a circle mesh object. In tool shelf, set vertices to 64, radius 1, align to view on, fill type triangle fan, Y location minus 1.2. Press Ctrl down arrow to reduce the view if needed. In Outliner, name the object Moon. We need to create the illusion of varied terrain on the edge of the lunar disk. So tap to edit mode. Press I and return to inset faces. Alt click the outer edge to select it. Press W and select Subdivide. In Tool Shelf, click the Randomize button and set Amount to 0.004. Press A twice to select all. 
then press I, enter 0 0.005 to insert faces again. Alt click the outer edge to select it. Press W and choose subdivide, then repeat once more. Click the randomize button and set amount to 0 0.002. Press A to select all, control comma for median pivot point, then S to scale, enter 0 0.99. Tap to object mode. Press S to scale again. Enter 1.016 to make the moon disk larger than the sun. Press Ctrl 2 for a level 2 subdivision modifier. In materials panel, click new. Change the name to moon. Change the shader type from the surface pop-up menu to emission. Set strength to 0.12. Press Shift F3 for the node editor. Click the material icon on the header. Add an image texture node. Then click the folder icon and navigate to the moon image. Connect the color to emission. Add a mapping node from the vector submenu. Set X and Y location to 0 0.5 and X and Y scale also to 0 0.5. Add a texture coordinate node from the input submenu and connect object outlet to the mapping node. Connect the mapping nodes to the image texture. We're done. Back to 3D view. Now for the solar prominences. Check that in the File menu, Import Submenu, the command Images as Planes is available. If it isn't, go to Preferences, Add on Pane, and search for Image. Enable the add-on by clicking its box on the right. Close the Preferences window. Now from the File menu again, Import Submenu, choose Images as Planes. Navigate to the Prominences image rendered in Part 1. In the Site Pane Material settings, click Emission and Transparent and import the image. In 3D view, press R to rotate, followed by X, enter 90. Then S to scale, enter 2.18. You might have to vary this by a tiny amount. Move the image plate forward with G followed by Y, enter minus 0.8. In Node Editor, delete the Light Path node. Connect the color output of image texture to Factor of Mix Shader. Add an RGB Curves node and drop it on the connector in between. Click and drag a point on the curve to the upper left, like so. Set Emission Strength to 3. Now back to 3D view. If you do a test render with F12, you should get a nice realistic eclipse, all-inclusive. All that remains is to animate the moon and the varying exposure. Press Escape to return to 3D view. We'll control the exposure of all the corona objects with a blocking plane. So, in front view, add a plane mesh object and in tool shelf set radius to 10, align to view on, Y location minus 0.6. In Outliner, rename the object Plane Block. In Materials panel, click New and name the material Block. Change the shader from the Surface pop-up menu to Mix Shader. Set Factor to 1 for full transparency. Set the first shader to Emission. 
click the color and enter hex value 020203. Set the second shader to transparent. Let's now animate the moon. Select the object in Outliner. Check in properties that its X and Z positions are zero. At frame 1, set X location to 0 0.06. Hover the mouse over the field and press I to set a location keyframe. Move to end frame 500 and set X location to minus 0 0.06. Hover, press I for location keyframe. To simulate the adjustment of exposure required because of the brightness of the sun, we'll animate four things. The render exposure setting, the blocking plane transparency, brightness of the prominences, and brightness of the moon. With the moon selected, go to frame 164 and in materials panel, set strength of the emission to zero. Hover mouse over the field, press I for keyframe. Go to frame 240, change strength to 0.12, hover, press I for keyframe. Move to frame 335, with strength still at 0.12, hover, press I for keyframe. Move to frame 354, set strength to 0, hover over the field, press I for keyframe. We repeat the whole thing for the blocking plane. Select the object in Outliner. Still at frame 354. In Materials panel, set Factor to 0. Hover the mouse, press I for keyframe. Move to frame 164. With Factor still at 0. Hover, press I for keyframe. Go to frame 240. Set Factor to 1. Hover. Press I for keyframe. Go to frame 335. Change factor to 1. Hover, press I for keyframe. Next, select the prominences object. Move to frame 150. In materials panel, reveal the strength field of the emission shader. Set it to 0. Hover over the field. Press I for keyframe. Move to frame 210. Change Strength to 3, Hover, press I for keyframe. Go to frame 343, Strength still at 3, Hover, press I for keyframe. Go to frame 364, Change Strength to 0, Hover, press I for keyframe. Lastly, the Render Exposure setting. In Render panel, reveal the setting in the Film pane. Go to frame 125, set exposure to 0.2, hover over the field, press I for keyframe. Go to frame 210, change exposure to 1, hover, press I for keyframe. Move to frame 343, with exposure still at 1, hover, press I for keyframe. Move to frame 375, Set exposure to 0.2, hover, press I for keyframe. With the prominences object still selected, I'll switch to rendered view and check that the image plane is sized correctly. Zooming in at frame 200, it's clear it needs to be enlarged slightly. I scale it up with S to scale, enter 1.006. Great, that's better. Now move to frame 1. Before rendering, we need to adjust curve interpolation of some parts of the animation. Switch to Graph Editor. In the Scene Data block, click the Exposure channel to select it. We want the exposure to overshoot a little before the second keyframe, so drag the handles as shown. Next, Click the pointer icon in the header. Then, in the plane block segment, select the default value factor channel. We control transparency with this, so no needs for overshoot. If the curve looks like this, with a flat top, then it's fine.
check that the similar channel in the prominences segment is also flat on top. In the Moon section, click the Moon Action Triangle and select the X Location channel. Press A to select all, then the period key on the numpad to zoom in. Use the scroll bars if needed. From the key menu, set interpolation type to linear. Then select the default value channel in the material segment. Zoom in and adjust the curve for a flat top and a slower lead in at the start. That's it, we're finally all done. Press Ctrl F12 to render the animation. This will take a while. When finished, press Ctrl F11 to play the rendered movie. Here it is again, looking very nice. And of course, you can play with the settings further to create your own version. And that concludes this tutorial. I hope it's been useful. Do feel free to leave a comment and subscribe for future updates.